Welcome to the video on mobile design best practices. Coming to mobile design, there are two things you need to check whether you are designing an online mobile application or an offline mobile application. If it is an offline mobile application use case, you need to keep in mind three core best practices. One is to enable client side decisions and validations so that even when the mobile is not in online, still when user is entering the inputs, user can validate those inputs even offline when you use client side validations and decisions. Second thing is you need to use data pages or sources rather than normal pages so that data pages implement caching and they can store those data. So even when the mobile is in offline mode, the data page will store all the completed work items. The data page thing occurs automatically to the application server when the mobile device comes online. Use layout groups to take advantage of responsive way. But depending on the screen size, consider displaying content such as lay tabs, accordions or stacked layout. You have to use responsive way so that layout groups automatically switch to a specific layout based on the resolution size, screen width and the device orientation. For example, if you consider a, a two column layout when, and when the screen resolution changes or when the screen becomes narrower, maybe you are using two apps at a time in your mobile or your screen orientation changes, then only one column appears to avoid horizontal scroll bar. Come, uh, these are the six device characteristics and best practices you need to follow while designing mobile application. Create a simple user interface that is use out of the box generated controls rather than non-auto generated controls. You need to use simple user interface like for example user can click on a button because in a mobile app clicking on a button is more intuitive than clicking on a link. Don't give multiple links rather use a button for example a user can click on a button and you can, and you can capture a QR code. Use auto-generated con uh, controls where possible because these are cross-browser compatible and if you use auto-generated controls, they, they are available and they are supported in almost all browsers, all mobile devices and for different screen sizes and resolutions and screen widths. Incorporate native features wherever possible. That is, uh, we have some of the native features while designing your cache type in your mobile app. You have signature control, address map, add attachment, use them wherever possible rather than writing your own features. Design for finger taps. So if you see, if you are designing for web application, then some of the actions that you can add in action set are like on click, double tap, hover, but double click and hover doesn't work, doesn't make any sense for mobile application. So try to avoid them. Always try to use single click or events only when designing for mobile application because you can't hover so on a mobile app. So don't use unnecessary hover action sets when designing views for mobile application. Test the application. Apart from testing the mobile application built on Pega Mobile Preview Simulators emulators, you have to mandatory test, exclusively test in the actual device. Android device or iOS device as well. Don't rely purely on testing only on Pega mobile preview. Use relative positioning. For example, design views to provide relative positioning for controls. For example, by default, dynamic layers use relative positioning for controls. Allow application to reposition content based on smaller screens. Uh, if you use a, if you add your controls in a dynamic layout, the advantage is dynamic layout use relative positioning in the back end. That is they, they will rearrange the controls so that there is no horizontal scrolling in the mobile. Thank you.